The Dodge Grip Tight Ball Bearing incorporates a unique method of mounting and dismounting a bearing to and from the shaft. The assembly uses a thin wall tapered adapter sleeve and lock nut to drive the bearing onto the sleeve and mount it to the shaft. Dismounting is accomplished by rotating the lock nut in a counterclockwise direction, pulling the bearing from the adapter and releasing it from the shaft. Different housing configurations are available including two bolt pillow blocks, tapped base units, two three and four bolt flange units, narrow and wide slot take-ups, and the easy clean polymer and stainless housings with corrosion resistant bearings. We'll be mounting a pillow block and flange 1 and 15 16 grip tight ball bearing. Tools that will be required to mount the Dodge grip tight ball bearings include an Allen wrench, drift or spanner wrench and hammer, micrometer, marker, screwdriver, torque wrench, and gloves. An instruction manual is supplied with each adapter mounted bearing and must be carefully read prior to mounting. If the lock nut and adapter sleeve are received separately or have been disassembled, reassemble by placing the lock nut into the inner ring groove. Place the adapter sleeve through the bearing bore. Occasionally, it may be necessary to tap the adapter into the bore of the bearing. While pushing on the adapter sleeve, rotate the lock nut clockwise to engage the adapter threads. We'll begin by mounting a 1 and 15 16 Dodge Grip Tight Adapter Pillow Block Bearing. Inspect the shaft to ensure that it's smooth, straight, free of nicks and burrs. As a result of the unique adapter mount design, standard commercial shafting is acceptable. Table 1 in the instruction manual lists the allowable commercial tolerances. Apply a thin coating of oil or other rust inhibitor to the mounting area of the shaft. All adapter mount bearings require load to be removed during mounting to ease bearing drive up and to minimize required mounting force. Slide the bearing to the desired position on the shaft. If the bearing does not slide onto the shaft, Rotate the lock nut one to two turns counterclockwise and slide the bearing onto the shaft. Now, tighten the bearing lock nut to its zero reference point or starting position. The zero reference point is defined as the point when the clearance between the adapter sleeve, shaft, and bearing bore is removed. To reach the zero reference point, tighten the lock nut clockwise using only your hands until the lock nut can be no longer rotated. Use gloves to assist with this step. Sometimes it may be necessary to hold the adapter sleeve so it does not turn on the shaft. Using a screwdriver placed in the adapter slot may aid in holding the adapter sleeve. Once the zero reference point is achieved, Mark a line on the face of the lock nut above the slot in the adapter sleeve. Next, determine the appropriate amount of lock nut rotation required for mounting. This information is located in table number 3 of the instruction manual. In the case of the 1 and 15 16 inch grip tight bearing, the rotation of the lock nut from the zero point is one full turn. Using a spanner or drift and hammer, rotate the lock nut clockwise one full turn from the marked zero reference point. The bearing is equipped with a set screw located on the outer diameter of the lock nut. The set screw is used to retain the lock nut. Tighten the set screw until the Allen wrench bends, which is approximately 25 inch pounds. The bearing has now been properly tightened to the shaft. To keep the housing in position, loosely install the base bolts. Insert mounting bolts and washers and tighten to proper torque. Install the next pillow block by sliding it into position on the shaft. The housing can be positioned by loosely installing the base bolts. Then pull the housing in the direction of the lock nut, 
so that the bolts are against the housing and mounting surface. Mount the second pillow block using the same steps. Check the base bolts. They should fit loosely in the bolt slots. If the bolts are pinched, loosen the base bolts on both bearings and reposition. If bolts are still pinched, uninstall one bearing, reposition, and reinstall. Finally, remove the supports and torque the base bolts to the value in Table 4 of the instruction manual. Due to the axial drive up of the inner ring on the adapter sleeve, a separate procedure is required for flange bearings. We'll install a 1 and 15 16 Dodge Grip Tight Flange Ball Bearing. Install the first flange using the same steps previously used for the pillow block. Start the installation of the second flange by placing it on the shaft. Slide it toward the bearing mounting surface but leave a 1 16th inch gap between the flange housing and the mounting surface. Using gloves, tighten the lock nut by hand to the zero reference point. Scribe a line on the adapter nut above the slot in the adapter sleeve. Note a gap should still exist between the flange and mounting surface. Install the mounting bolts and pull the housing flush with the mounting surface by alternately tightening the bolts to the proper torque. While tightening the mounting bolts, do not rescribe the line or tighten the lock nut. As you tighten the housing bolts, the bearing assembly will slide along the shaft toward the mounting surface. Secure the bearing to the shaft by continuing the rotation of the lock nut until it has completed one full turn. Remember, the total rotation of the lock nut is from the initial scribed line. Tighten the set screw until the Allen wrench bends, which is approximately 25 inch pounds. The bearing has now been properly tightened to the shaft. Finally, remove any supports and torque the base bolts to the value in Table 4 of the instruction manual. To dismount the bearings, Loosen the base bolts, then remove the load. Loosen the set screw. Next, rotate the lock nut counterclockwise using a hammer and drift or spanner wrench. Continue to drive the nut counterclockwise until the bearing is released from the shaft. Remove base bolts and then slide the bearing off the shaft. Grease fittings are supplied with Dodge Grip Tight bearings for re-lubrication purposes. The Grip Tight bearings are pre-lubricated at the factory with lithium grease. The Dodge Easy Clean Corrosion Resistant Grip Tight bearings are factory lubricated with H1 food grade grease. In both cases, the bearings should be re-lubricated with compatible grease. Due to various operating conditions such as speed, load, ambient temperature, and contamination, re-lubrication intervals may vary. The re-lubrication intervals listed in the instruction manual, table number 5, should be used as a reference. Grease can be added with a standard hand-held grease gun. If it is safe to do so, bearings should be re-lubricated while in operation to equally distribute grease throughout the bearing and minimize the temperature rise which may occur during re-lubrication. Clean the grease fitting and the grease gun nozzle. A good rule of thumb is to slowly add grease until clean grease can be seen purging past the bearing seals. However, for high speed applications, small amounts of grease at short relubrication intervals is recommended versus large amounts of grease at longer relubrication intervals. There will be a temperature rise which will be indicated by the aid of a thermocouple inserted in the bearing housing. The seals of the Dodge Grip Tight bearings are designed to purge any excess grease from the bearing. 
We've accomplished two very important requirements to achieving long bearing life. First, we have introduced clean grease to the internal contacting surfaces of the bearing, which helps to prevent bearing wear. Second, we have purged, contaminated, and deteriorated grease from the bearing. As you've seen, the grip-tight ball bearing provides you with many advantages, such as easy on, easy off, reducing the cost of replacing bearings, reduces vibration with 360-degree concentric contact, eliminates shaft damage caused by set screws and fretting corrosion, accommodates commercial grade and undersized shafts, reduces your inventory by 25 to 45 percent. Another Dodge video you might want to watch is the Hydraulic ISAF.